in order for me to listen, you have to speak, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> in order for me to understand, you can't keep it all to yourself. That line that came out of your mouth blew me away. It really did. It was really, that's worth so much to so many people. So Olivia, you're 17. You're a senior in high school now. So I think it'd be really nice and actually really important if you would share not only some of the things you struggle with mm -hmm. at this age in high school, but what some of your friends, what other kids are struggling with. So we can kind of have a better understanding of that. Um, I think the biggest thing for me and my friends right now, as we're in senior year, is dealing with all of the pressure of college and like whether it be from parents or teachers or just the way the school system is kind of designed, there's a lot of pressure to get into the right college, to have like the highest marks because college is so competitive. And with all of that, it's it gets so stressful and so difficult just to manage everyone's expectations and to maintain your own mental health and all of that just really builds and that's the biggest thing me and my friends are dealing with right now and when you hear oh someone's already done their college applications it's like well I'm behind now and so it's it just feels like a big game of catch-up honestly yeah. do you think it's just you or are you most of your friends feel the same way. It's, it's most of my friends. That's our biggest thing right now. It is. Yeah. Okay. And then what else as far as, you know, relationships, right? Through our whole lives. I mean, our lives are about relationships. Mm -hmm. So what are the most difficult type of relationships you have to deal with right now in high school? There's no way to not talk about what it is like when you feel pressure from your parents or other family members. So, you know, as a parent, I think what a lot of kids don't understand is that we truly don't have all the answers. Mm -hmm. We don't always know exactly the right thing to say, when to say it and how to say it, even though we want to. They really don't prepare you for this. There is no life class in school that we received on how to be a parent, on how to really connect with your kids and know what to say. But what is it that is the most difficult aspect of that for you? I think sometimes your parents tend to put their expectations on you for like sometimes they'll like they'll take their past experiences and they want a certain future for their kids and I think that's true for all parents but when that doesn't line up with what your kids want that's kind of when the trouble begins and you butt heads and so I think just since I'm going into college and parents have a lot of expectations for what they want their child's future to look like when that doesn't align with what your kid wants and is passionate about that's when things can come to you know the point of butting heads and it just gets really difficult to try to manage their expectations and I think that's the biggest like break in communication that mm -hmm. I've experienced yeah it is challenging yeah you know there's many challenging aspects to this Sometimes we do need to have, all parents need to have difficult and uncomfortable conversations with their kids. It is just a part of life. And most people, kids especially, will run like it's the plague from having those or they don't want to open up or they don't want to talk about it. So share a little bit about that. How is and what are the ways when it's time to have an uncomfortable conversation, what is the best way to make that happen? I mean, a big part of it depends on the subject, but I would say in general, what makes it a little easier is just coming at the conversation in a very chill way with no accusations and just genuinely wanting to understand 
and know more about the other person's opinion rather than why did you do this? Like, why, why did I hear this? What does this mean? And not assuming any, any of those things and just genuinely asking and wanting to know. That makes it a little easier. That is, it's a very good point, Olivia, because even in myself, there's many times where I see someone's behavior and I think about what it would mean or what it means if I were to act that way, it has to mean this. Like I see somebody's behavior and it has to mean what it would mean if I was acting that way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so anytime, let's say, if I maybe misunderstand something, if I see maybe you doing something in a way that I'm like, well, it's got to mean this because she's this, because she's this, that's why she's doing that. And the only way to get around that is to have a difficult conversation and ask and listen, did this mean that when you did that? Mm -hmm. And what happens is when kids do open up and explain themselves to their parents, if we're listening, all of a sudden it's like, oh, it didn't mean that at all. And it's like the whole tension floor just drops, Yeah, you know, but the catch 22 is, you know, as a parent, we can't force our kids to open up to us. But when they open up to us, if we're listening, all of a sudden, things make so much more sense. And the biggest, the biggest challenge that I would love parents to understand, and you can share this from your point of view too, living with unresolved issues. Because sometimes your perspectives don't fully align. Sometimes, no matter how much we talk about something, we're not going to see it the same way. And there are unresolved interpersonal relationship issues, life issues, perspective issues that we're not going to see eye to eye on. And can I share with you, can a parent share with her kids that, listen, you mean more to me than the difficulty that we're having. You mean more to me than that behavior or this event. But let's talk about it. And even if we can't resolve it, I need you to understand that you mean more to me than that does. Mm -hmm. And I think if that could be expressed, you know, what would that do? I think it would just take away a lot of the resentment and the gap in communication. And I think it would just really open both people up. Mm -hmm. for the better. Can you still love your mom and dad the same, even if you don't agree upon everything? Yeah. Can you have unresolved issues that maybe don't need to be talked about, but still be, be safe with your parents? Mm -hmm. And I think that is something that's really important to be aware of. So when it comes to this feeling of the pressure you feel right now, the pressure you feel from college. You know, you said you feel it from your friends. If you find out a friend has just submitted the college application, you're like, great. Now I feel even worse about myself, right? Yeah. You know, how, how do you handle that pressure? How do your friends handle that pressure? What do you see that happens as a result of it? At least last year, because junior year is the most packed, most difficult year in high school. Um, all of that can kind of build up and just feel like this weight that makes it really difficult to, you know, get your responsibilities done, your assignments in. And so grades can start to drop. And with that added on, your mental health just kind of goes off. And it makes, you know, the task with college so much harder because mm -hmm. you have all this weight on top of that that just kind of builds. Mm -hmm. It's just not a good cycle. Yeah. But how, on like a scale of 1 to 10, how much does that, that stress affect you on your day-to-day -day life? Like 7 or 8. Really? Yeah. Is this, so you think it's the same for pretty much everybody? Yeah. Okay. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> So how do you, how do you deal with it? 
you know? I use band as just like a creative outlet Mm -hmm. to kind of get away from it. Um, Passions, stuff like that takes a lot off just because you kind of get to forget about that and enjoy for a little while. Mm -hmm. But I know people do different things, you know. Okay. So here is kind of the magical question. You know, if you could, well, well, you are right now. If you could speak to every single parent out there, right? Because you are. What could you, what do you want them to really understand the most about you and people, you know, not just you, Mm -hmm. about you and all the kids in your age range where you are in life, going through everything you've just described that you're struggling with? What do you wish every parent could understand? For me, I would say that right now, support is better than solutions. Just Mm. being there and being there to support your kid when they come to you rather than looking for ways to fix or ways to help or ways to speed up the process. Just, Just being there for whatever questions and whatever they need is more important than any scholarship idea you can give them or any you know college advisor meeting those are important too but I think it's just better to hold space at this point for your kid to tell you what they need rather than trying to figure it out Uh, that one (laughs) support is better than solutions that one that one like got right in (laughs) oh my gosh I don't I don't know how better you could have said that yeah that is, that's the hardest part about being a parent. Yeah. You know, there's, there's this joke with, especially with, with, you know, husbands and wives where sometimes your wife, your wife just wants to be heard and not fixed. And as a guy, especially a dad that likes to fix things, you know, whether it's cars, whether it's instruments, whether, you know, all the things I fix with my hands, right? Mm-hmm. Or whether it's fears and phobias, like I fix every day in my life. All I do is fix every day. Yeah. So to sit, and hold space and release the need to offer a solution, release the need to fix. I mean, that's like nails on a chalkboard for me. It's really hard, right? Mm -hmm. But I I can hear that. And I think every parent can relate to what I've just shared, especially the fix it dad. You know, I'm the fix it dad, you know that. Yeah. You know, my oldest daughter comes in, there's a flattener tire. Let's go to work. Let's pull that out. That's what I do. But it doesn't work the same with relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's really good for me to hear. And I know it's good for a lot of people to hear. What's hard for me and a lot of parents is it's a lot easier to not offer solutions if I know that you're working on them, for example, you know, but when I don't know, and we don't hear that communication, our minds can go a little much. And it's Mm -hmm. like, well, if you're not stepping up, somebody has to, and you might be stepping up, Mm -hmm. but you're not communicating that. So I have no way to know. So as a parent, we just start to take over. It's like, well, if you're not going to do what I am Mm -hmm. and something as simple as sharing kind of what you're thinking, some things you're looking at, different ideas, all of a sudden, knowing that you have that, our minds start to quiet Mm -hmm. and it's easier to hold space, but there is a balance, you know, because there are times where we can't just leave everything to to our kids Yeah, where things, you know, expectations do have to be put on, you know, but there's, there's healthy expectations Mm -hmm. and then there's expectations that destroy relationships. I also think kids need to hear that sometimes you do have to open up Mm -hmm. and express yourself to your parents about what you think and what you feel. And if, as parents, we knew just to hold space and listen, you know, it is, it's a balancing act. It's, it's in order for me to listen, you have to speak, right? (laughs) in order for me to understand you can't keep it all to yourself you know because we do have believe it or not you know we've have lived a little longer than you you know and so there are feelings that we get and sometimes they're right the intuitions we have about parents when we see our kids are struggling but i may not know 
the areas you're struggling in. Therefore, I guess, and I throw the wrong solutions at you. I throw the wrong things that really aren't helping. Mm -hmm. But you understand I'm trying to. Yeah. But if I don't know, we guess. You know, we, when you know somebody, you know somebody. You know when something isn't right. But I could be so wrong in what I think isn't right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, I'm coming at you in the most ineffective way. But then if I ask, you know, ask you, hey, so, so what is going on? And a famous line any kid would say would be nothing, you know. <laughs> so understand also kids have their part. So if your parent is asking you what's going on and you choose to say nothing, well, that is almost like adding salt to a wound. It's like, well, what do I do with that? Mm -hmm. Versus knowing that sometimes, yes, it may be uncomfortable. And you have a right to keep certain things to yourself. You do have a right to a private life. Mm -hmm. But you do have a responsibility, if you're in a loving relationship with your family, to sometimes open up about those uncomfortable things. You know, being vulnerable, sharing those parts of yourself that don't feel quite right. And it may not feel great, but that is also important because I don't see parenting as a two-way street at all, but sometimes it has to be a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. You know, where as a kid, you do have to share with your parents. And if you pre-frame it like, you know, mom or dad, listen, you asked me what's wrong, but if I share with you what's wrong, I just need you to listen. Is that fair? Can we do that? And if you can't do that, I can't open up to you. You know, that's a great way to start it. Yeah. And if it doesn't stay in that direction, then you absolutely always have the right to stop and say not now. But there is, kids do need to. They need to realize you can't keep everything to yourself. And I think the more, as a parent, we can understand, hold space, don't force a solution, and as a kid, you can understand. All right, let me share what I'm going through and trust that they're not going to force solutions down my throat. All of a sudden, that relationship gets healthier. This catch-22 is this. I know when I was a kid, many times I thought I was living the secret private life that nobody else would understand. It's like my mom would never understand what I'm going through or my dad has no idea about what I'm going through, or nobody else gets me. So I'm in my head, and I isolate into my own things. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're isolating into something like band, choir, or for me it was guitar, or whatever, whatever positive you can put your focus on, well, that can be a good thing. But what I did learn to understand is that there isn't an experience any kid is having nowadays that somebody else doesn't understand. There is nothing so isolating that somebody else hasn't experienced. But we isolate and we hide away as if we're the only one that has ever had these emotions, that has ever thought these thoughts, and that has ever been in this experience. And out of the billions of people on this planet, we all share the same experience. I mean, have you felt that, that you've been in the place where nobody understands you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how often has that happened to you? And it probably still does, but how often do you feel that? It's, I mean, yeah, one pretty often. Yeah. Yeah. And now when I share that, my first instinct is to say that, you don't really believe me, you know, mm -hmm. like there's no way you can understand me, dad. You know, nobody else knows what I feel, right? You're making me sound like an angsty, like. No, you're not. Teen. You're not an angsty <laughs> teen. I, I never use that word teen either. <laughs> but what I'm saying is for any, anybody in the high school experience or younger or the teen experience or even older, there is a huge feeling like I'm the only one that has ever felt this way, that nobody else understands me. 
Have you felt this from your friends? Yeah. Okay, so tell me more about that. Like when you, you know you have friends that feel nobody understands them. Yeah. And they're self-destructive. You know, what do you want them to know? Like what do you want to share with them so they don't keep going down a self-destructive path? Yeah, it's good stuff. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I, well, I know of one friend who definitely feels very alone, but that's, I think, more the relationship with his family rather than his friends, and that, you know, has led him to a place where I don't really talk with him anymore. Um, and I really do, like, I, I wish we were still close, and I I wish he knew that, you know, I'm still here if he wants to talk, and that, because we used to be so close, and I know I'm not going through the same thing as him, but I can empathize and relate. And yeah, reaching out is what people don't do mm -hmm. when it's not as scary as it seems. And it can kind of alter the way you feel because it's like, yeah, there's someone here who maybe it's not the same thing, but they've felt the same way and they're, you know, in the same boat and it gets less lonely from there and I really wish more people would do that mm -hmm. very well said reaching out is the number one thing that needs to happen mm -hmm. for kids that are feeling isolated not just kids adults you know when we get into the world of addiction isolation is addiction connection is the opposite of addiction but when we get into unhealthy patterns of thinking when we think that nobody else can understand the pain that we feel, we start to isolate. Mm -hmm. And that's the worst thing we can do. Reaching out, saying, hey. And it, I think it's, it's not just hard for kids. It's hard for adults, too. Many adults have to hit rock bottom before they reach out for help. And rock bottom can be really a really ugly place for a lot of people where there's been a lot of destruction, not only to themselves, to their family, to their health, to their finances. And sometimes those patterns start right where you are, you know? And so for kids that are struggling, reaching out to an old friend is huge. Why do you, why do you think it is so hard? for somebody to make the first move in reaching out? Um, I think when you've been used to dealing with your stuff alone or when you feel like you can't, you know, go to your parents or your family, that kind of translates into the rest of your life with your friends and stuff. And it's like, oh, if I can't tell them, you know, I'm better off just dealing with it on my own and, it's easy to get stuck in that and to stay there. And I think that's why reaching out is so difficult because it's like, oh, you know, I have to do this on my own because you've been so used to that pattern. And in reality, it's much easier if you have someone else to support you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I agree with that. So tell me how true this feels as I share this with you. You know, one thing I have definitely learned and have come to understand is, and this isn't just for kids in high school, one of our biggest fears is just not to be embarrassed, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I heard somebody say once, the object, and I'm sorry to use the word teenager, because mm -hmm. I, I don't use that in the way that's less than. The number one driving force for a teenager is to just not be embarrassed, right? Yeah. If I can get through this day without being embarrassed, if I can get through this class without being embarrassed, if I can eat lunch without being embarrassed, then I'm okay, right? Yeah. And so what can happen? If you reach out to somebody for help and you get rejected, you feel embarrassed. Mm -hmm. And... That's why there are 
identifying the people in your life that you can reach out to. That's also a huge thing. Mm -hmm. I often share in a different way for people that are working on their goals and dreams and want more out of life. Well, don't share your big dreams with small-minded people. And for kids and adults, don't share your vulnerability with people that aren't equipped to listen to it. You know, there are some great school counselors. And of course, there's ones that aren't so great, like anything else. And there are, everybody knows. Do you not know that special teacher you could talk to if you needed to? Oh, yeah. yeah. That you could go to and that would be like, all right, this, this person can hear my vulnerability, can make me feel not isolated anymore. And they can just hold that space for me. That's such a great, I mean, I had those teachers in, in my high school, some that I still think about that have molded me to this day. But realizing maybe it's not a somebody your age, maybe it is a teacher, that special teacher or coach that say, hey, I just, I just need to share with you for a minute. Can you hear me? That can change your life. Mm -hmm. And that can also stop anyone from going down a self-destructive path. And that's a beautiful thing. So thank you for sharing all of that. It was really, mm -hmm. really great. And is there anything else in the back of your mind that you're thinking about? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, this was fantastic. And I hope people watch this over and over again to just understand and parents, kids can hopefully understand each other a little more just by listening and taking some of these concepts to heart and remembering them.